G'day there guys, it's Connie here again from Marky Industries. Hope you're all well. I'm going to be reading some more Reddit stories for you today. I hope that's okay with you. Anyway, like and subscribe and all that, and let's get right into the video. Cheers. Okay, as usual, we're on relationships. This one was written by user Craiger Smith, and it's titled... My wife is cheating on me without cheating on me. Let me explain. Sorry, this is long, but there's a lot of information. My wife and I have been each other's closest and often only friend for the longest time. Both of us are very shy and have a hard time making friends. Recently, she made a friend at her job, who is a guy. She's had guy work friends before and it never really bothered me, but this one is different. First, she started texting him a lot. A lot out of nowhere, and I didn't know about it until I discovered she went over our texting limit, which she never even got close to before. She hid it from me for fear of me getting jealous. She is adamant about him just being a friend, and one that she needs. She goes to lunch with him and goes to get coffee. Once a week or so, they talk on the phone for a couple of hours. They've also been sending pictures of themselves to each other. Not racy ones or anything, just normal stuff. They often text each other all day long, literally even to the point that they have to say goodnight to each other. Now for the most part, she's been open about it all. Every now and then I'll discover something she didn't tell me, or catch her in a small lie, that she said she was doing to protect my feelings. But still, for the most part, she isn't hiding it. I'm fairly positive they aren't spending more time together than I think, because there isn't any missing time in her schedule that I've seen. No time unexplained. But I still feel like she's having an emotional affair. I've told her, in no uncertain terms, that this makes me uncomfortable, that I really don't like her having this level of friendship with another man, but I also know that it's wrong for me to tell her she can't have this friendship. The problem is, he is also married, and their marriage is going through tough times, and his wife has told him not to text my wife anymore, so they've started texting through hanging with friends, so she won't know, which I think is disrespectful and wrong. People at her work have been speculating that they're having an affair, to the point it's spread to the whole store. I've asked my wife, in one of the many fights and discussions we've had about this, if she would tell her mum what she was doing. She said no. I asked if she thought what she was doing against my wishes and his wife's wishes was okay, and she said no. But this is not enough to get her to stop. I'm not even asking her to drop him as a friend, just to treat him like a normal friend from work. No platonic dates or long chats or all-day text marathons. She's even told me that if the situation were reversed, she would hate it if I had a girlfriend like this. But still, this is not enough for her to stop. I cannot talk to anyone about it because every friend or family member of mine is also close with her and I wouldn't want anyone thinking less of her or knowing we're having this issue. So, I have to suffer in silence. I don't know what I should do. I'm trying to respect her and not be overbearing, but this whole thing just feels like it's gone way too far, and I feel I'm justified in hating this. It feels good just to write this all out. Sorry I rambled and jumped around a bit, just so much information. Anyway, what do you think? Am I just being too sensitive or paranoid, or am I right in being upset? Yeah, no, I think most people would be upset over this. It sounds like she's enjoying the attention from this other person way too much, and she's too caught up in it to tell him no. Let's see what the comments think. Hello dear, reading your post had me making a list in my head. This friend of your wife's works with her, so they already have regular interaction. On top of this, they started texting all day, and sending each other pictures. They are so close the office is gossiping. Both spouses are uncomfortable. Yet in spite of the gossip, the upset spouses, and your wife admitting she wouldn't be happy if the tables were turned, she refuses to dial back her contact with this person, not cease contact, just dial back to a normal friendship level. It's good that she's been open with you, which I take as a sign that she at least partially knows her behaviour is problematic, and she trusts you and wants to change or be called out, but at the same time, the extent to which she interacts with this guy says to me that at this moment in time, he's her top priority. She knows she's making you uncomfortable, she knows he's putting his marriage at risk, she knows the office is gossiping, but she can't help but talk to him constantly. I would be worried, especially if she knows you won't leave her. I mean, basically she can do whatever she wants and take advantage of your loving heart with no repercussions. That sounds like what she's doing right now, to be honest. She can indulge her fixation with her friend and spend all day interacting with him, having him make her feel special and interesting and awesome, 
and she knows that she'll still get to bask in your feelings for her and snuggle you at the end of the day. It's a risk-free, emotional affair, and it's completely unfair and hurtful to you. You are absolutely right to be upset. You are not being sensitive or paranoid. This is overstepping the line, and it will most likely turn into a full physical affair. This is pretty much how they all start. You have already caught her lying, and they're already going behind his wife's back. There is a chance she is doing the old boyfriend overlap, which will result in your wife leaving you for this loser. You have a few options. A. Sit back and see what happens. Could fizzle out. She could sleep with him and realize what mistake she has made, or she could run away with him. B. Put your man pants on, tell her this is inappropriate, and tell her you are absolutely not going to tolerate it. Or C. Get a friend, change his name to a woman's name on the phone, start texting all day every day, send pictures etc and give her a taste of her own medicine. This is pathetically passive aggressive, but hey, we can't be adults all the time. <laughs> Option C sounds fun. Another comment says, Tell her that you want to talk to the guy. Do not accept, I don't want you to do that, from her. She's gone too far past the point of respecting feelings. Sit this guy down, tell him it's going to stop, and do not phrase it like there's any other option. Tell him how much he's messed up your marriage as well as his own. If he says he can't stop, then ask him if he's slept with your wife yet. If he says yes, then tell his wife and consult a divorce lawyer. If he says no and is actually honest enough to say there's been times where it almost happened, then tell him that he's going to end the emotional affair with your wife or you'll tell his wife. You need to show your wife that you're willing to leave her if the situation doesn't change or gets even worse. Don't make it a threat, make it an action. Stay with a friend for a weekend, or have her stay with her parents. If she balks at that, then tell her you're going to tell her mother what's going on, so her mother can make sure she's not trying to actively cheat on you while you two are separated. At this point, if the marriage is going to continue, you'll need a marriage counsellor, and a lot of the time. I don't know what your financial situation is, but you can't let her think she's free to carry on what she's doing, because you don't want to leave her. And about that not leaving her thing... The reason why you need to make this a legitimate thought is because if she knows you're not going to leave her, then she'll respect you less and less until the point where she walks out on you, most likely after the other guy and his wife split up. I don't know what the hang-up is, religious belief, personal belief, financial decision or otherwise, that has you saying, I will not be leaving her, but at the absolute minimum, you need to make her think you're considering it. Yeah, solid stuff. Let's see what Opie does. On to an update. Thank you all so much for your comments and advice. It has all been very eye-opening and helpful. I came to realize I was in denial and that, whether my wife realized it or not, this was a problem that needed fixing. As I posted already yesterday, I left her a letter at home explaining my feelings and packed a small bag. I went to spend the night in the hotel and asked to meet with her tonight to talk this thing out. In the letter, I posted about a dozen other comments from you folks, just so she could see what other people think of our situation. I also included what I posted, so she would know I didn't exaggerate. Don't worry, I didn't include your handles, so she won't be coming after you. When she got home and read the note, she called me. I didn't answer, but in her voicemail, in which she was bawling, which is very uncharacteristic of her, she begged me to come home and talk. She said in the message that yesterday she was at lunch with the other guy and they both had already decided to end the friendship because they both realized they were developing feelings for each other. After a while, I decided to go home and talk with her. We had quite a long conversation. She told me that the other day he admitted to having feelings for her, but promised not to push. She told me that the day before yesterday, she realized she was developing feelings for him too, and it scared her. She said she really thought they were just friends, that she was refusing to believe it was becoming anything more, and then it just happened. She told me that they didn't do anything physical yet, that it hadn't gotten that far, which is why they decided to end the friendship, because neither wanted to cross a line they can't uncross. I'm choosing to believe her in that. She told me that even though she was already backing out of the friendship with him, that the letter I left really opened her eyes at what she was doing to me, and to us, it killed me to see her so broken and ashamed. I've never seen her like this before. We both cried for a long time. I said everything I had to say and asked the questions I needed to know the answers to. I believe she was honest with me, finally, about everything, including some things that were hard to hear. This went on for a couple of hours. Instead of staying at the hotel by myself, I invited her to come with me. 
We went out to dinner, went to the hot tub at the hotel, and then had a wonderful night together. Now, I know what some of you are thinking, but this isn't the end of it. We've got a lot of stuff to work through. We're talking about some cancelling, and it'll take me a while to fully trust her again. I'm not just letting it slide like nothing happened, but I'm also not giving up on my marriage. I will not. I never will. Some of you may think that makes me a chump, but I don't care. This is the woman I pledged to spend the rest of my life with, and as long as I have a say in the matter, I don't intend on breaking that promise. For better or for worse, right? Today, I also sent a text message to the other guy, telling him that my wife told me what was going on, and that I wanted to make it clear that if I ever see just a single non-work-related text from him on her phone again, that we will be having a different discussion, and in person. My wife and I have a long road ahead of us, but I'm positive we're both committed to getting things fixed between us, and moving forward. I really wanted to thank all of you, at least those of you who offered real advice, for yesterday. I needed to be woken up, and I think it happened just in the nick of time. I feel like this dark cloud is finally starting to break up. Yeah, great update. I mean, everyone's going to have their own opinions on whether or not Opie should have, you know, kept going in this relationship, but I think we can all agree that the fact that he's willing to work on this relationship means he's putting his energy in the right places. Okay, he makes another update. Hello everyone again. Thank you all, most of you anyway, for the wonderful messages of encouragement. My wife and I have been having a lot of deep emotional discussions over these last couple days. Having been with her for 12 years, I can honestly say that I've noticed a big change in her during these past couple months, but these past few days, she's finally back to her old self again. I can tell that she's sincere. Found out that the other guy and his wife are moving away soon, which makes me happy. My wife has felt so terrible. She is committed to being transparent, allowing me to be as nosy as I need to be, and to check up on her as much as I need to until I feel comfortable again. We're going to be starting up some counselling with our pastor soon, which I think is going to be a great help. It still hurts that it even got as far as it did. I've been cycling through anger, hurting, disappointment, and hope. I'm sure it will take a long while before those bad feelings go away, but we're going to be okay. I'm sure of it. Yeah, quite optimistic from OP there. I still feel like it's going to be pretty hard to move on and just ignore the fact that his wife disrespected him like that in the past. But if he's willing to and he can, all the power to him. Anyway, what are your thoughts about that one? Let me know down below. Otherwise, we'll move on to another story. Okay, this next one was originally posted on Am I the A-Hole? It was written by user Little Green Worm, and it's titled Am I the A-Hole for Hiding My Personal Life at Work? I'm in a little trouble at work because I've sort of been hiding my personal life. I've worked in this office for about nine years, working my way up. I'm notoriously private and also believe in a clear separation of work and home life. With that, I never, ever talk about home life. I'm not ashamed of my life, I just don't like to discuss it at work. My co-workers enjoy talking about their personal lives and often include me. If I'm asked any questions, I usually redirect or move on to someone else. In this manner, none of my co-workers knew I'm married, have twin daughters, and a very active personal life. We hired Melinda last year and she took it upon herself to become the office snoop. She spent several weeks getting as close to everyone as possible. However, she does this to seek out potentially useful information she can hold over people's heads. Try as she did, I never gave her anything. My co-workers view me as a sort of enigma. Compartmentalization aside, I've made some great friendships at work. There are more things to talk about than my husband and my kids. They are a big part of my life, but I'm not even going to martyr myself and say they're the most important. They're hugely important and come before everything else, but I'm not a sycophant and I enjoy the 10 hours a day I'm at work when I get to be an adult and talk about things other than Jojo Siwa and the newest Gendacian exploit. Last week, Friday, Melinda came into work looking like the cat who got the goldfish. At lunch, she announced to everyone that I'm married with two daughters, a dog, and a nice house. I play softball, I kayak, and occasionally mountain climb, and that I'm on Facebook. She couldn't see my posts, however, some of my photos are shared with others, and therefore not private. I used a shortened version of my name, Ali from Alexandra, and my married name on Facebook, so I'm not sure how she found me, unless she used white pages and put two and two together. I've already reported her to HR. But the problem is, my co-workers are acting like this is a big effing deal. One of my friends said she's hurt that I don't trust any of them and hold them in such low regard. 
I tried to explain that it's nothing against anyone. I just don't like discussing home at work, and vice versa. I never bring work home. When I'm home, that's time with my kids, or my dog, or my husband, or friends and hobbies. Heck, I chose to live an hour outside of the city in a small town just to avoid work when I'm not there. I've apologised if any feelings were hurt, but my co-workers are now giving me the chill, and won't talk to me unless it's directly about work. I honestly don't see the problem. I've never lied to them, I've never given them false info, I've never made up wild tales about my life, I'm still the same person I was. Now they just know more about me than they did. Am I the a-hole? Yeah, no, I feel like Opie has a right to let her work colleagues know as little or as much about her as she wants. Let's go to the comments. Not the a-hole. Melinda needs to mind her frickin' business. I would complain to HR about her harassing you. Opie says, Oh, I did, and they're looking into it. If she did it at home, there isn't much they can do. But if she did any of her snooping on company computers, or time... She's going to be at least reprimanded, if not written up. The most they can do is move her to a new department or team for creating a hostile work environment. Not the a-hole. Melinda is. That is your private life, and exactly that. You're entitled to keep it private. To me, Melinda could be considered a stalker, and possibly a matter for the police, let alone HR. Opie says, Oh, HR knows. I went right to them after lunch. They'll be speaking with her soon. The least they can do is a reprimand, the best they can do is write her up for a hostile environment and then transfer her to a new team. In any case, she's revealed her true colours. The only bonus here is now no one is speaking to her either. They don't trust either of us anymore. Not the a-hole. They're not entitled to live six inches up your ass. But really, congrats on keeping the barrier as impermeable as you did, even while having the Facebook. That place usually turns an island into an intersection, as it were. Opie replies... Facebook has been almost impossible to manage efficiently. It's why I switched to my married name and my nickname. It's mostly just family and a few friends. I think I have 26 of them, lol. I mostly use it to upload my photos so I can always have them, in case something happens to my Google Drive, my iCloud, or any of my backups. Another comment says, You're the a-hole. These people want to consider you a real friend, but can't if you won't share basic info about your life. They are not work people. They're goddamn people. People who thought they were your friends. Such a hard divide between work and home is artificial. You've decided that they're lesser than friends because you met them at work. Meanwhile, real friends that you meet outside of work get to really know you. You reap what you sow. Opie replies, I'm insanely private, so it takes a long time for me to fully open up to people. I have several different kinds of friends. I have work friends. I have friends with kids who my kids and I spend time with. I have sports friends who I do my sports with. I'm just not comfortable sharing my life with strangers. It takes a very long time to learn things about me. I don't consider anyone beneath me or less than myself. I just consider who the person is, if they need to know something about me. I'm never false with them. I have plenty of topics to discuss, but I just respectfully feel personal and professional don't mix well. You've worked there for nine years. How exactly are they strangers? Nine years with one company, but several different departments as we all get promotions or demotions. I usually spend about two and a half to three years with a department. I've been with this department for about two years. In about nine months, I'll be leaving for a new department as I'm slated for a promotion to upper management. Opie adds, I mean, yes, it seems unusual to you, but my reasoning behind it is pure. I'm insanely private, but my field is also incredibly male-dominated. Melinda the snoop aside, we don't have many women present, and the ones with families are treated like crap and given crap assignments. It's out of desperation to protect the career I spent eight years in college for, and also because, well honestly, I just don't want to talk about it at work. Work is my escape. I love my job and I love my family and I have a good balance. And I totally get what you were saying in your comment, not to detract from that, and thanks for understanding my own reasoning. Could I have handled it better? Probably. I totally validate their feelings. They're certainly allowed to feel like I've let them down. I just don't see why things have to change. After as many years as we've all known each other, I can't imagine them thinking I'm suddenly someone they need to be wary of, like I've just been collecting their own stories until one day I can use them for my benefit. I don't know, it's just baffling, I guess. Everyone sucks here. You for following character assessment. Quote, However, she does this to seek out potentially useful information she can hold over people's heads. 
and for trying to be such a control freak to such an extent of hiding the fact that you're even married, not even wearing a wedding band I take it. This is a rather weird place to take how much to care about your privacy. I'm not much of a sharer at work either, but my colleagues do generally know my interests and my marriage status because these tidbits of information really aren't all that precious. Obviously Melinda as well for crap stirring. Opie replies. I stand by the quote. Melinda has used information against co-workers quite often. For example, my co-worker, who I'll call Hank, found out he has cancer recently, but he was also assigned to this huge project. Very important. Time-consuming. Our boss hands out important projects very rarely, and he never hands them out if he has even the slightest idea you can't handle it. Melinda somehow found out from Hank about his diagnosis, and two days later she told our boss. Hank was removed from the project altogether. Melinda was then assigned to the project along with someone else. Or this one girl, Lucy, who was in charge of a mini-merger between us and another company. However, Lucy's ex-boyfriend from six years ago works in that company, but they're friendly. She happened to say something one day, and Melinda went and told our boss that Lucy and the ex had drama, and Lucy and her entire team were removed from the merger. However, Melinda and her team were assigned to the merger. Melinda found out that Rob had a job interview for a competing company and told our boss, who then fired Rob. Melinda seeks out information she can use to further herself at the detriment to others. I wear a wedding band, it's just unconventional and doesn't look like one. My colleagues know my interests, we talk about hiking and softball, some arts and crafts work I enjoy doing. They've seen me knitting at my desk, doing needlepoint, drawing. There's more to talk about than just my seven-year-old isn't speaking to her daddy because he grounded her for a bad test score, or my husband and I had an argument because he broke my grandma's vase. I just don't have my head up my own ass when my family is concerned. It's amazing that Hank, Lucy and Rob don't hate Melinda. Do they support you? Opie says, Hank actually retired to spend his last few months living on a houseboat right after Melinda blew the whistle on him, so we've disconnected. Rob and I are actually friends outside of work, but it was totally by accident. He had taken his sons to my town to go to this little record store, and I bumped into him. So he knew I lived there, and I think he assumed I had a family, but he never said anything. He was less upset than, say, Lucy, who actually confides in me about her relationship with her parents. My whole thing with Lucy was because, and I'm no doctor, but I became a sort of therapist for her. She felt very comfortable sharing her woes with me, and I know with therapy the one listening is supposed to keep their own problems separate so the other person can feel comfortable. Lucy comes from a bad situation, and I could tell she needed someone to trust. And oh my god, I just realized how badly I effed up with Lucy. She trusted me and I took that from her. Wow, I feel like a dick. The commenter adds, What did you do to lose Lucy's trust? Did she ever ask you for personal details? Did you blatantly lie to her? Opie replies, it's just that she confided everything to me. I know things about her that her parents don't. She has a lot of personal problems and she put a great deal of trust into my hands, and then for me to turn around and act like I don't trust her, or wouldn't, is probably the meanest thing I could have done to her. It's like saying, hey, let me cook dinner for you, but I'll never let you return the favour because you'll never cook as good as I did. She trusted me and I've made it seem like I don't trust her. She never explicitly asked for personal details, but on occasion she asked if I have any sort of relatable incident in my life. For example, Lucy's young son is currently in the hospital. He has sickle cell leukemia, and she wanted to know if I knew anyone whose kid had been really sick but made it through. My younger twin daughter was born with a heart defect, and she requires surgery every few years to repair the damage. I told her I didn't think I had a story to compare with hers, not because I didn't want to tell her about my daughter's heart, but because it's not the same thing. My daughter isn't sick. She's never spent longer than a couple weeks in the hospital. Her surgeries are routine, she handles them incredibly well, and she gets right back to her regular life. She was only really, really sick when she and her sister were newborn. I sort of generalised it, I guess. Another comment says, Don't you wear a wedding ring? Opie says yes, but it isn't a plain wedding band. It's one my husband designed and had made. He wears one just like it. It doesn't look conventional, just looks like jewellery. But it's on your wedding finger, yes? Do you have rings on every finger? I do tend to wear multiple rings, but I can't do it every single day. I wake some days and my hands are either dry or swollen. Those are the days I go bare. Not the a-hole, and your co-worker Nancy Drew is a huge frickin' weirdo. That said, quote, I've apologised if any feelings were hurt, but my co-workers are now giving me the chill and won't talk to me unless it's directly about work. I honestly don't see the problem. 
I'm confused why you're upset that your other co-workers are confining themselves to only speaking to you about work, since this seems like exactly what you've been doing all these years, and what you've modelled that you want from them. Opie replies, We speak about a variety of things, I just don't talk about family. I play softball, I hike, I knit, I do art, I sing and dance, and they know that about me. They don't know about my family life. They don't know, for example, what my father does, or how and when my mother died. They don't know I have a sister in prison on drug charges. They don't know my younger twin daughter has a heart condition where she has surgery every three years. They don't know that my older daughter just confided in me that she thinks she likes girls, or rather, she likes this one girl. They don't know that it gives me joy to see my daughter that happy about a girl. They don't need to know these things. Okay, I think that's enough questions and answers. Felt like a bit of an interrogation session there in the comments. Okay, on to an update. I don't have any sort of interesting update. HR brought us both in yesterday afternoon and asked us WTF is going on. I presented my side, as detailed above, and Melinda gave hers. She basically said that she'd been trying to get to know everyone, and she'd been having trouble getting to know me, so she found my Facebook in an effort to find something to talk about with me, and then she just informed everyone else. I asked my HR rep to pull up Facebook and do a cursory search for my real name. There were several. Then I asked him to search my married name, or the one I go by on Facebook, Ali Smith. There were enough for about six or seven scrolls on the mouse pad. In any case, too many to count. I haven't touched my own page since I reported the incident. It was about 30 names from the top, but like I said, my profile pic is my dog, not me, so she would have had to look at each thumbnail photo or view each account. I do have an Instagram page that's on private, but I only have a few friends, mostly family members, under that same name. She found me the night before last and friended me. Naturally, I blocked her. HR gave her a reprimand for creating a negative work atmosphere. My rep wasn't sure why Melinda felt the need to blast my info for everyone, and he called BS on her for claiming it was innocent. So that's that. That's probably all that's going to come from it, because my co-workers are now acting mostly back to normal. However, I took the advice from this sub and I'm making amends. They're all mostly receptive. I'm going to learn to open up, but not by much. But they know enough about me to know I'm not an automaton or anything. Now for a final update in the comments. She was given a reprimand and ultimately, she quit. No one would speak to her and the grapevine has it that HR was beginning an investigation into her due to multiple complaints. As for me, my co-workers have moved on and we're back to normal. I still maintain my privacy, but I also don't avoid questions when asked. However, my co-workers recognise that I just don't want to talk about my private life and therefore they don't ask deeply personal questions. In any case, I'm due a promotion soon that will be moving myself and my family to a new country, which we're all looking forward to. I plan on much the same by way of my personality, but I won't be such a weirdo about it. Yeah, that sounds like a good compromise, I think. What are your thoughts about that one? Let me know down below. Maybe you got a similar story you'd like to share. Anyway, let's move on to another story. Okay, this one was originally posted on MI the A-Hole as well. It was written by user Morbid Mummy, and it's titled Am I the A-Hole for banning my husband and father-in-law from the delivery room due to their intensely stressful and creepy behaviour during my pregnancy? A lot of context, the character limit cuts off, but here's the gist. My husband and I are expecting our first child, which I knew would be a really sensitive issue as his own mother died in childbirth with him. We met with a marriage counsellor to talk things through at the beginning, and he swears he's been seeing his own therapist twice a month throughout my pregnancy. I don't want to call him a liar, but I'm fairly sure he's either not going or not talking about the big issue. He and his father, a hugely active part of our lives, are completely convinced that I'm going to die in childbirth. They won't openly admit it, but their behaviour has reached the point where it's constantly making me feel stressed and uncomfortable. When it was husband saying, please make sure your life insurance is up to date, and I'd like to meet with a lawyer and draft a will, I was like, that's kind of intense, but okay if that makes you feel better. When husband asked me to go through all of my possessions and inventory, what I wanted to be saved for the baby versus what I would want to be returned to my family in the event of my death, I put my foot down and said absolutely not, too morbid, no way. My father-in-law, who lives a few blocks away and eats dinner with us two to four nights a week, got on my case about how I was making things difficult for my husband in the event that he will be a grieving widower with a newborn. 
I'm just going to add here that I've had a completely complication-free pregnancy and have no reason to think I will die screaming in the coming weeks. When I tell my husband this, he calls me paranoid, but I feel like my father-in-law wants me to die. His whole life identity for the past 35 years has been amazing single dad. He'd never dated or had close friends or even hobbies really, and it seems like he's looking forward to being able to guide my husband through what he went through. At this point, I'd honestly be happy to never see my father-in-law again, and I certainly don't want him in the delivery room, especially since he told me he was putting his foot down about me not being allowed to have an epidural or laughing gas. He's a commanding presence, and I know that whatever he wants in the delivery room he will get. I know people will say, oh, L&D nurses would never let that happen to you, but you haven't met this man. My husband, in addition to backing his dad on everything, acts like my due date is my death date and is completely pulled away from me. Every minute with him is morbid, stressful, and a reminder that our marriage seems to be crumbling. No matter how many times I tell him his behavior makes me stressed and upset, it's just getting worse, and I do not want it around me while I'm concentrating on giving birth. Do I owe it to my husband to let him stress and upset me during labor? Is his presence at the birth more important than a safe and healthy delivery? My therapist says no, but this whole thing has been so weird, I feel like I need some outside perspective. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely lying about therapy, and the behavior is just bizarre to me. I feel like at this point they should be going to therapy together and talking it out amongst themselves. Let's go to the comments. Not the a-hole, but in my opinion, it's time to be frank. Tell him you want to go to his next therapy appointment, then you need to explain to the therapist what has been going on, and that you are seriously considering banning your husband from the delivery room. Another comment says, using the top comment to mention that not only should the husband clearly not be in the delivery room, but OP may also want to consider getting some sort of power of attorney, giving someone other than the husband the right to make medical decisions during this period. Husband is clearly not in his right mind at the moment, and I wouldn't trust him to make decisions in Opie's best interest if Opie is unconscious. Holy frickin' crap, what did I just read? Not the a-hole. I don't even have words to describe how effed up your situation is. Do not let them in with you. Jesus Christ, what is wrong with them? I'd even look into staying with your family away from them for the remainder of your pregnancy. If your husband refuses to address this massive issue, and is just being backed by your father-in-law, go to safe territory and don't let them terrify you for the rest of your pregnancy. That's not good for you. Holy hell, what insanity. Jesus frickin' Christ, I would not only not allow them in the room, but if I were you, I would consider how safe you are in this marriage. Not the a-hole. No, not the a-hole. As soon as you said this behavior was stressing you out, they needed to back off and be supportive instead. That's a lot to deal with on top of being pregnant. I could be wrong, but I think most women wouldn't want their father-in-law in the delivery room, so although that background info is intense, it's not needed. This is your body, your birth, you decide. If they can't be supportive, it's on them, and don't feel guilty for putting you and the baby first. I hope you have someone else in your life you can count on when the time comes. Going back to marriage counselling sounds like a good idea. Congrats, and wishing you strength, literally. Opie replies, I really, really, really would prefer my own mother to be there in place of my father-in-law. Hospital only allows two support folks in the room. My husband said that that's not fair, as we both need a support person, that he will be mine and my father-in-law will be his. I do get that, but father-in-law is like actively planning for my death. I don't want that vibe in the delivery room. Yeah, fair enough too. I mean, I wonder what their reaction's going to be when OP ultimately and inevitably doesn't die. Like, are they even going to be happy, or what? I'm just so confused. Let's go to an update. This is a long overdue update. I know I worried everyone, and I'm grateful every day for every ounce of concern that was sent my way. I'll be completely honest, I forgot the login information for my other account, and fussing about a throwaway Reddit account wasn't the highest priority in my life at the time. To get right into it, I was unfortunately right about my suspicion that my ex wasn't going to therapy. I sat down with him and very firmly put my foot down about my mother being my support person in the delivery room alongside him, and that my, thankfully, ex-father-in-law was not to be anywhere near the delivery room. I also was very adamant that I was getting an epidural, and ex-father-in-law had no say about any medical procedures I may take. 
I also told him that I was seeking my own therapist, as his and his father's actions were worrying me. My ex-husband didn't take it well, to put it simply. I'd never heard him shout at me like that, and it scared me a little. My fury outweighed my fear not long after, however. He told me I didn't need a therapist, that he was just trying to be prepared. I admittedly lost my temper and told him that I wasn't going to die. It wasn't my fault his father's trauma worried its way into his head, and that he needed to fix it without taking it out on me. He yelled at me that he didn't need therapy. That caught me a little off guard. I asked him why he went to his therapist and was given advice about my death if he felt he didn't need it. His expression gave it away, and he caved not long after. It turns out there was no therapist. It was just his dad. During the times he was supposed to be at therapy, he was with his dad. I'm still fuming. In the end, I gave him a choice. He could either go to therapy, or I was leaving. I had enough of their delusions. He chose to refuse therapy, and I packed my things and stayed with my mother. At that point, I still wasn't planning on divorce. I had hoped that we could possibly fix our marriage, as naive as it sounds, but my ex decided that if he couldn't convince me to go back, then he would get his father and the rest of his family to do it. I had to change my number due to the amount of harassment and vitriol they hurled at me. In the end, it was just my mother in the delivery room as I gave birth. I'm thankful for the nursing staff. They were a godsend, and I felt safe that neither my ex or his father would get even remotely close to the room without my say-so. The divorce is still ongoing, so I can't give too many details on that front, but I have hopes that we can work out a tentative co-parenting agreement. My ex isn't a bad father, he loves our baby girl, but our relationship is done, and as long as I live, ex-father-in-law will never be near my daughter. I'll wrap this up. I've got an adorable little toddler tugging at my leg at the moment. I'm alive, I'm happy, and I've got my baby in my arms. Life is good. Wow, well, folks, and that's the end of that one. Yeah, I mean, you could kind of tell it wasn't going to be a pretty ending based on the first post, but I'm glad to hear that Opie's away from those guys. I mean, what a bizarre and undeniably frightening situation to find yourself in. One comment says, I really want to know what was the ex's reaction when he found out that Opie didn't die. Like, did he even regret anything? Did he realize he destroyed his marriage over nothing? Or does he blame her for leaving and not going back to him once the baby was born? Does he even realize how bad it was to let his father get over his head? Did he at least try to apologize? I mean, probably not. He definitely sounds like the type that would gaslight her into thinking she was exaggerating for leaving him for such a small thing. Because he spent that whole time getting himself ready to lose her to death, and in the end, she's alive and well, and he lost her by his own actions. I wonder what's going on in his mind right now. Yeah, hopefully remorse, but who knows with these sorts of people. What are your thoughts? Let me know down in the comments. Anyway, let's move on again. Okay, this one was posted on Petty Revenge. It was written by user Higher Bank Ranger, and it's titled Want my girlfriend? Threaten me? Take my whole crappy life. I had a girlfriend. We were bad for each other, and unsurprisingly, she was cheating on me. I found out in a rather dramatic way and had a full-on mental breakdown. Dude who she was cheating with had been fed a bunch of lies to keep him from talking to me, and he started threatening me with violence. Long story short, we broke up, she moved out of our place and into his place, and I started therapy. A few months go by, and I realize in therapy that I wasn't just busted up about my ex-girlfriend, but also my whole life. I decided to find a new job, a new place to live, everything. I got the ball rolling, and the day I got my new job offer, I saw an email come into our jobs inbox at the company I was working for. I recognized the name as the guy who was threatening me, and now living with my cheating ex. So I referred him to my boss. I talked about how he was great, I'd only heard good things, and hey, because I was putting in my two weeks, they should definitely hire him. Dude comes in for an interview. I'm on the panel. When we're in the room together alone, he's like, Dude, I'm sorry bro for all the things I said. Thank you so much for helping me out. I say, No sweat, she always had good things to say about you, and I know that she had a good picker. After all, she chose both of us. And we chuckled like polite people. He actually does okay in the interview, and gets the job. That job was a crap show. I'm not exaggerating when I say that it's the worst job I've ever had. The place that I was moving to was paying twice for a third of the work. I was so relieved to be leaving. 
When I moved out of my place, a month later, my landlord asked if I knew anyone who was looking. I gave her the guy's phone number. That apartment was charming as hell when you first see it, but was similarly absolute trash, but you didn't know that until you were living there. My buddy from my old job told me he got the call for it at work, and jumped on it, so I knew he had my old crappy job, my old crappy place, and my old cheating girlfriend. I hope he enjoyed my life more than I did, but somehow I doubt it. I do know that they broke up about two months later. Haha, <laughs> that's great. Didn't just give him sloppy seconds with the old cheating girlfriend, but also his whole miserable life beforehand. Bravo, sir. Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you guys enjoyed those stories. Thanks for making it to the end, and I'll see you all in the next video. Have a good day. Cheers.